Hi Facebook friends, my name is Caitlin. I am one of the animal care specialists here at Odyssey Aquarium and we are down in our Living Seas Carousel to take a close look at one of our really special sea lions, Ella. Now here we're in our pinniped area. So here we have six California sea lions and one Pacific Harbor seal. But we have one really special animal we want to introduce you to. Her name is Ella. Now Ella was a rescued animal. She was rescued nine years ago off the coast of Southern California. Now when she was found, she was found without her mother, which left her in a really bad position because sea lions are mammals just like you and I, and they rely on nursing in order to survive. So this left Ella in a really bad position. So rescuers were able to rehabilitate her and release her back out into the wild. But Ella continued to restrand, which left her in an even worse position. So she needed a forever home, which has been here at Odyssey Aquarium. Ella is doing really well here at Odyssey Aquarium and she is thriving. She is one of our most intelligent animals we have here. She knows over a hundred different behaviors. And right now we are going to show you one of her training sessions where she's learning one of her new behaviors where it's to come down here at the glass and interact with one of our animal care specialists down here. Now this is Leo. He is one of our animal care specialists who has a really good relationship with Ella. Now that is a huge part in how we care for our animals, is by having a really nice and positive relationship with them. We need to make sure that there's trust on both sides. Some of our sea lions, when they're fully grown, will be upwards of 700 pounds. So that's really important that we trust them and they trust us. So by building that positive relationship with us, that makes it all work. So here we have Ella. She's going to be learning this glass behavior where she comes down here from another trainer. Now by building that relationship with her and working with her every single day, we really get to know her and what her likes and dislikes are. And with Ella in particular, she loves to interact with her trainers. So for this session, not only does she get one trainer, but she has two. So this is a really reinforcing session for Ella. Now there's all kinds of different reinforcements that we use here at Odyssey Aquarium. We can use things like different fish, ice, even frozen toys, and sometimes even jello. So these are all things that we can use to reinforce Ella throughout our sessions. Now, sessions can be anything. It can be enrichment, it can be learning sessions, or even just play times. All throughout the day, we do different sessions with our animals. So this is just one session that Ella will have. A little bit later on today, she'll be interacting with some of her other sea lion friends in the same exhibit. So sometimes we might play with her and just interact with her all throughout the day. Now you, our guests here at Odyssey, can actually tell Ella apart from some of our sea lions. When she comes on back down, we'll take a really close look at her face and her body because it's very different from some of our other females that we have here. Now when she comes down here, take a close look at her coloration. She is very light in color in comparison to some of our females. When she dries out, she's almost blonde. So really take a close look at her. You can see exactly here on her chest how light in color she is. Also, she has very, very long vibrissae. If you look at those vibrissae, are those whisker-like things on the front of her face. And they're particularly longer than some of our other sea lions here. So you can definitely tell her apart than some of our other guys, which is really interesting. So next time when you're here at Odyssey Aquarium, see if you can point her out out of the crowd. Now Ella right now is doing a really, really nice job. She's learning how to come down here and interact with her trainers down here at the glass. And like I said, we do a lot of different training sessions here. And all of the training sessions are done using positive reinforcement. Basically the same way you guys train your dogs at home. But instead of giving them lots of yummy dog treats, we give them all of those different fun fish and different toys that we have here. Now Ella is learning a couple of different things down here. She can do a lot of different behaviors above the water, but we're teaching her to translate them underwater as well, which is a little bit challenging for her, but she finds being challenged by behaviors really interesting and really fun. Now, getting to know Ella is part of our job and really focusing in on that relationship like we talked about earlier is a really important thing for us to get to work with Ella every single day. Now, as we get to know her, we do find out what she really finds in reinforcing and what she finds not so reinforcing. So by doing these different sessions, we really build up that relationship and make sure that it's really positive with her here at the Odyssey Aquarium. 
Now down here at the glass, you can definitely take a look at some of her other behaviors that she has here. You can see that she's opening her mouth down here. Take a good look at all of those teeth that she has. And you can get a good look at her body as well. Those really strong front flippers as well as those back flippers that she's going to use to stop and see her as she swims. Now those front flippers are really nice and strong which helps her swim through that water. Now obviously you can see Ella is doing great here at the Odyssey Aquarium and definitely having a lot of fun. But some sea lion pups have not fared so well down when they've been er, on the beach stranded. And here at Odyssey Aquarium, even in Scottsdale, you can definitely help those pups. Over the past couple of years, there has been several mass strandings and mass mortality events, uh, events over the last couple of years. And we can do things to help them. Things like overfishing and climate change are all reasons why pups are stranded every single year. But even here at Scottsdale, you can do stuff to help. We partnered with Monterey Bay Aquarium to, uh, with their Seafood Watch. It's an app that you can download onto your phone and make really nice sustainable fish choices to make sure you're not only eating these guys' food, but also getting a healthier choice for yourself as well. Also, by reducing your plastic use is not only going to help our sea lions, but help other animals as well. And some of the other animals that we have here, you can help with too. And some of the rescue animals that we have, let's go check them out over here. So we're going to go check out some of the other rescued animals we have here at Odyssey Aquarium. We have Alyssa here and she's going to tell you all about them. Hi guys, so I'm going to talk to you about some of our sea turtles. We actually have six sea turtles here at Odyssey Aquarium, but I'm going to introduce you to the ladies we have. We have four females behind me and we have two loggerheads and two greens. So actually right here is our newest member. She is 40. Um, she is our loggerhead turtle, one of our two. She's about 160 pounds and she's actually taking a nap right now. But pretty soon we're going to throw in some enrichment devices to hopefully wake them up and show them a good morning. Um, up top is Greta. She's one of our greens. I'm not sure if you can see her. Um, she actually has a pretty bad case of bubble butt, so she stays on the surface pretty frequently. But I'll explain what bubble butt is in just a half second. Let me introduce you to our most famous member here. This is Charlie. She is our loggerhead turtle. She's about 140 pounds and she just woke up. Um, she's a very active turtle. You can see on the back of her shell, she actually has a little piece missing. She was struck by a boat. Now, she also has bubble butt, like I was talking about Greta. So what happens is when they get trauma to the back of their shell, um, it'll grow over that wound and it'll trap air in the back of their shell. So that kind of gives them a positive buoyancy and makes them stay on the surface. Now, Charlie's a very lucky girl. She was rescued by a great facility down in Florida, and she actually has two weights epoxied to the back of her shell, and that gives her that negative buoyancy that she needs to stay on the bottom. Obviously, she's doing a great job. She hangs out on the bottom a lot. Um, this is her favorite corner. She likes to fall asleep here all the time. So we are gonna drop down a few things for them to enjoy. Um, Charlie and the other loggerhead are actually carnivores, um, but we drop down lettuce for the greens and the carnivores because they all love them. Um, you can definitely see once we drop them in that she will be all over that. But while we're here, you can actually see our other resident here, that's Erica. She is our smallest turtle in the exhibit. She's about 20 pounds, and she's actually missing that right front flipper. Now, Erica was rescued in South Padre Island in Texas. She was actually um, predated on by a bird, so she's missing that right front flipper and the back halves of her two rear flippers. Um, so she was only about 30 grams when she got rescued. She was very, very tiny. She was a very fresh hatchling. And they got her to be about 20 pounds, be really healthy. They helped with that amputation. And now Odyssey is her forever home. So hopefully once we drop these lettuce in, um, we can see them all grazing on it. Charlie's definitely going to be the most enthusiastic for sure. But Charlie, like I said, is a carnivore. She'll eat greens. She'll eat pretty much anything. Um, she, her favorite's definitely squid and crab. Uh, 40, she loves squid, absolute favorite, same with clam. Um, so all of these animals are rescued. Uh, like I said, Charlie was rescued in Florida. Erica was rescued in uh, Texas. Uh, 40 was rescued in Virginia. So they came from all over the world. <laughs> and you can see that there's a lot of activity right now. And Charlie's gonna make a quick turnaround now that she sees this enrichment device. Um, so we use re enrichment devices just like the sea lion team does here um, for our turtles. We actually do a lot of training with our turtles as well. Um, so you can see Charlie's pretty excited about this and a lot of the fish are too. Um, so what we do is we drop in these devices that kind of give the animals a sense of a normal natural environment. So Charlie's obviously enjoying this and grazing like she would in the wild. Um, 40's coming over to pay a visit as well. And then it looks like 
Who is that? Looks like Greta's enjoying hers over there as well. So these animals are kind of foraging, grazing. The greens will eat sea grasses all day, every day. So this is a really similar environment to them like they would have in the wild. <laughs> so you can see that 40 actually has a perfect buoyancy. And Charlie's butt stays a little bit up on the surface. That's because of that boat strike that she had. And that's actually a really common wound for a lot of turtles. They'll get struck by boats. They'll get caught in fishing line. Um, bubble butt's a very, very common rescue that we'll have. But thankfully, we figured out that if we put weights on the back of them, it helps the turtles get a little bit more comfortable in their environment. So now you can see three of our turtles are all enjoying this enrichment device. Erica up there on the top is staying away from all the, the craziness. Um, and then Charlie and Forty are definitely taking out all that lettuce, even though they're carnivores. But let's go see what Greta's up to in this corner. I'll talk about her for a little bit. So this is Greta. She also has bubble butt, but her case is a little bit more severe. So you can see that she has that dome shape to the top of her shell. Um, when she was rescued, she couldn't go down to the bottom at all. Um, but now she obviously is getting much better at doing this. Um, we're actually working with Greta right now to put some weights on the back of her shell that'll give her that negative buoyancy like Charlie has. Um, but right now she's enjoying that lettuce and exhibiting what would be a natural behavior. So for all of the turtles, we actually are training them, like I said. Um, all of the turtles have a target, which is a shape we'll put in the water that each individual recognizes their own shape. So they'll swim up to that and they'll touch their face to it, and then we'll give them a form of positive reinforcement, which for Greta is obviously lettuce, she's a big fan. Um, but for the loggerheads, they can get clam or squid or crab. But we'll put that in the water to tell them, good job, you did a great job. And then we'll pull that target, we can ask for it again. And we can also use these targets for husbandry behaviors. So we can have our animals swim into stretchers if we need to do their physicals, since they do have a few <laughs> medical issues like this bubble butt. Um, but they're being looked after 24 seven and their rescue facilities did a great job rehabilitating them. And they are obviously enjoying their forever home here at Odyssey. <laughs> She's definitely got like a good head of lettuce by herself. But all turtles are, um, actually six of the seven species of turtles are threatened or endangered. And you can actually do your part here in Arizona to help. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen our reusable bags here at Odyssey, but we're big fans of them here. Um, if you ever use plastic bags and you've seen them in the water, they can pretty much perfectly mimic a jellyfish and that's the turtle's favorite treat. Um, so they'll eat those and then they'll get in their digestive system. It can actually wreak a lot of havoc on these turtles. Um, as Caitlin was talking about, we did partner with Seafood Watch, which is a great app and it does help you eat sustainably. Um, so all of our turtles are actually doing really, really well thanks to their rescue facilities. But um, apps like Seafood Watch can help you do your part in rescuing these animals. So by eating sustainable seafood, um, I'm not sure if everyone's been here yet, but Boudreaux, one of our males, has two flippers missing, and he was caught in a long line. So sustainable fishing has a direct impact on turtles, on sharks, on sea lions, on everything in the oceans. If we have, he if we have healthy oceans, we have a healthy planet. <laughs> I think Forty's here to say goodbye, but let's go check out on the rest of it. Let's see. Hi, Forty. Looks like all the feeders are done. But all the turtles here have been rescued. They've had a great life, and we're happy to have them here at their forever home at Odyssey.